On January 14, 2013, Wesley Swilling was shot and killed in the back parking lot of the Greenville, South Carolina Law Enforcement Center. Frank Abella of the Greenville Sheriff's Office fired at Swilling 22 times. An as of yet unnamed employee of the Greenville Police Department fired at Swilling twice. At most, Swilling threw a baseball at the police employees and carried a hot glue gun wrapped in electrical tape. Shortly after the shooting, Terry Wilfong of the Greenville Police Department put forth that the shooters had not acted in the wrong. Steve Loftus of the Greenville Sheriff's Office said the same. That conclusion was echoed by South Carolina solicitor Walt Wilkins, who claimed a thorough investigation had been done. Arabella's actions reasonable. He fired at Swilling until his magazine was exhausted, then reloaded, then fired more rounds. Remember, Swilling never returned fire. He couldn't. He didn't have a gun. And why has the second shooter's identity never been released? But uh, what was your name again? Officer Bragg. P-R-A-G-G. Officer Bragg. Okay, so you're the public information officer there at Greenville Police Department? Yes. Okay, so you're telling me that y'all have not and don't plan to release the name of the Greenville Police Department employee who was involved with the shooting? No. We just, um, aren't, we're just, from now on, um, we're not going to release any name involving the officers. Um, there's really no need to. If we see that there is a need to or we are told we have to, then we'll do it then. But there's no, it's not necessary to release the name, so we're not going to. It doesn't strike me as a good scenario when the folks who claim to protect others can engage in a shooting and then not and then you know investigate themselves and or have their colleagues investigate them and then not even share the names of those who acted in the incident okay i mean i'm just letting you know um, what our policy is right now and that we're not releasing the officer's name do you personally think that that's a good policy that should be continued um, i'm upholding the policy of the department and i agree with to be clear, I've had police personnel refuse to share information with me immediately after an incident, but never two and a half months later after the shooters have been cleared. Video of the incident, grainy and difficult to discern, was released only after police employees involved in the shooting were cleared by their colleagues. And the video itself was doctored. It began with a scene that happened later in the exchange. Why? To make it look more like Swilling's actions jived with the claims that he had acted aggressively? Let's watch the video as it was released. This footage shows the parking lot behind the law enforcement center. You can see Swilling walking to the left, Frank Abella crouched near the driver door of his car, and the unnamed Greenville police employee further back. This clip shows a police cruiser appearing on the scene. Like I said, it was released to the public out of order. One police employee is between the headlights, and the other is about 15 feet out front. He soon dashes to the right. Swilling is to the left. Note too, that thus far, no police reports have been released about the incident. Swilling is seen walking to the right, past the police car, toward the guardrail. Again, it's tough to see things clearly, but I never saw Swilling throw a baseball in any of the clips. What is clear, though, is that he never fired a shot, yet he was fired at 24 times in total, struck 7 times, including 3 times in the back. If this incident doesn't sit well with you, I encourage you to call the Greenville Police Department to share your thoughts. And, if you're so inclined, Swilling's family and friends have set up a memorial and tribute fund.